Hello and welcome to this vlog post. I have been cranking out some really fabulous books lately and I'm absolutely thrilled to share with you today. Um, it's a box set from one of my favourite authors and just a generally fabulous all-round person, Joanna Craven. We've just released her West Country Trilogy box set. Um, sorry, West Country Trilogy series as a box set. It's not actually a trilogy because there's a prequel in there too. So let me read the back. Uh, as it's a box set, there's a wee bit of information here. <laughs> so bear with me. So this is Joanna Craven's West Country series. Lose yourself in 18th century Cornwall with the complete series book sent, brrr, boxed set of the West Country trilogy, a saga of smuggling, superstition and secrets. Cornwall, England, 1740. They say only... <laughs> can't, get my, can't get my words out today. They say only the brave ride Bridewell's Lane at night. Vicar Richard Dodds... <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> Vicar Richard Dodge speaks of ghosts and demons conducting elaborate exorcisms in his churchyard overlooking the lane. And with the villagers sheltering in fear, local smugglers carry their hall up the road to be hidden in the safety of the church. Isaac and Scarlet Bailey have spent their lives hiding, hiding contraband in Talon Church. Forced into free trade by their father's mistakes, they want nothing more than to escape the smuggling syndicate and build a life above the law. On the other side of Bridal's Lane, Flora Kelly has grown up in the shadow of her mother, the village charmer. Skeptical of her mother's craft, Flora reopens her family's tavern, determined that her life will not be one of fortune-telling and folklore. When a seemingly abandoned ship is wrecked in Talon Bay, it sparks a wave of hysteria among the superstitious villagers. Faith in the vicar wavers, and Flora feels herself drawn to the controversial old ways of her mother. Among growing unrest, the mystery of the wrecked ship de deepens, unearthing long-forgotten secrets that will tear a village and a family apart. So the box set consists of the prequel, which is Moonshine, book one, Bridal's Lane, book two, Hills of Silver, and book three, Wild Light. Look, I wasn't even reading from my phone for that bit. <laughs> um, I'm going to read to you a section of the prequel, Moonshine. It's the only one of the books which isn't available in print form. It's just a short story, so it's um, it's available online as an ebook and also as an audiobook. The I want to mention that the artwork for all of these books is so beautiful. Um, so I really recommend listen to them, obviously, uh, but maybe grab yourself a copy and paper as well, because the, the artwork is just amazing. Uh, so this is a section from the prequel to the West Country trilogy, Moonshine. Ruben takes Scarlet by the wrist and leads her down the cliff towards the harbour. A ship has returned. Her brothers... She squints in the pale lamplight, sees men moving about on the deck. She can't make out their faces. Reuben returns and hands Scarlet the tobacco grinder. Put it in your pocket, quickly now. Take it straight to Mr Smith, the house with the crooked chimney. Yes, yes, she looks at him witheringly. He has repeated his instructions at least five times. Does he think her brainless as a fly? The rasp heavy in the pocket stitched into her cloak, she darts through the village and out to the hills. No light around but the faint smoulder of the moon, lamps winking in the houses on Talland Hill. She has never been afraid of the dark, has always liked the peace of it, the silence, the secrets, its ability to make this wild world disappear. Rain runs down the back of her neck, she can feel the earth turning to mud beneath her boots, through the trees... Through the, through the tangled undergrowth, fast, quiet. Isaac will be impressed. Reuben will be impressed. She crawls over the edge of the embankment and onto the path, her cloak waterlogged and heavy. She pulls the rasp from her sodden pocket and holds it against her chest. She stares down the path. It is narrow and muddy. Cottages spread sparsely along it. The last house in the row of three. She turns right. Walks slowly, uncertainly, squinting through the sheets of rain. A voice in the darkness makes her start. You there. She turns, heart thudding. A man is watching from his doorway, a lamp in hand. Rain mists around the light. Come inside, maid. Scarlet shakes her head. It's raining. Come on now. Dry yourself by the fire. 
Inside the house, she can see the orange glow of the flames. She shivers. Ahead of her, the path is wet and lightless. She slips through the door. The house is thick with shadow, lit only by the blaze in the grate. A crooked table sits in one corner, sleeping pallet by the hearth. She smells piss and fire. The man is tall, hair hanging loose to his shoulders. His beard is grey, cut close to his chin, the way her father's had been the last time she had seen him. He looks at the tobacco grinder pressed to her chest. What you got there? I'm not supposed to say. You're Jacob's girl, S. I was wondering how long it would be before Reuben got to you. Rain pelts the windows. Scarlet shivers, her fingers numb. She slides the rasp back into her pocket and edges towards the fire. The man nods. That's it, maid. Warm yourself. He sits at the table. Who's your package for? That cuckoo Elias Smith? She hesitates. You're not supposed to say. A nod. What's Reuben want with you, then? An innocent face to slide under the riding officer's noses? I'm good at climbing the hills, says Scarlet. He chuckles. I'm sure you are. He goes to the shelf in the corner of the room and returns brandishing a pocket knife. Scarlet's heart speeds. Run. Her legs feel suddenly heavy. The man kneels in front of her, eyes are level with hers. He holds out the knife. Have you ever used one of these? She shakes her head, can't pull her eyes from the flames reflecting on the blade. He presses it into her hand. Take it. She wraps her hand around it hesitantly. I knew Jacob, you see. I know your tacit would not want his girl running goods without protection. Sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> he folds his leathery hand over hers, guides the blade towards his stomach. Here, a man comes at you, you strike him ear, then you drive it upwards, under the ribs. He jerks her hand in a swift upwards motion. Scarlet feels a sudden rush of energy. She imagines digging her knife into the men who had carried her from the mariner's arms. Fast. Upwards. Under the ribs. Show me, says the man. Scarlet grips the knife. She holds the blade against his stomach, copies his movement. Swift. Angry. Good. Put it by your stockings, S. Carry it with you always. She slides it into her garter. The feel of it against her thigh makes her stomach swell. She feels old, strong. Can't wait to show Isaac. She grins. The man returns her smile. Go on, then. The rain is stopping. Elias Smith is two houses al Elias, sorry. Elias Smith is two houses along the road. Well, I almost did that whole sample without cocking it up. <laughs> Where would be the fun in that? That was um, a section of Joanna Craven's Moonshine. It's the prequel to her West Country trilogy, which has just been released on box set. So I recommend you get yourself to Audible, Amazon or iTunes and pick up a copy. Do I have any freebies? I think I've got a few freebies. So if you would, like, I'm not promising that because it's a whole box set. So if I do have freebies, that's really, really good value. <laughs> anyway, if you are interested in potentially having a freebie, um, pop me an email and I'll just check that situation for you. I think I do have a couple, though. Uh, anyway, I am narrator Rebecca McKernan. You can find me on Twitter and Facebook at Becca Tells Tales and also at RebeccaMcKernan.com. Thank you for listening. There'll be more to you soon. I am working like a work horse, <laughs> but obviously not remembering my idioms very well. <laughs> um, and I will be back to you really soon. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Mwah.